OK, so we have already finished lab one, which is to serve the static page at the root path. So we go to the second lab. The second lab is to integrate the socket IO library to, to your application. So um, as I ju just mentioned, socket IO is composed of two parts. One part is at the server part, a server that integrates or mounts on the Node.js HTTP server. So this is the socket IO library at the server side. And at the client side, we have socket IO minus client library. And this library is served to the client automatically when you load the socket IO module. So before you use the library, you need to install it using npm. So this is the command I just executed at my application. And this command will update the package.json file for you to include the socket IO dependencies to the package.json file. So now we will first change the server, file, server part. Okay. We modify the bin slash www file. So I uh, let me open it first. Bin and then www. And let's put it at the end of the file. We first load the module required uh, shortcut IO. Oh. Okay, and then you, and this module takes an argument, which is the Node.js HTTP server. So you need to pass the argument to the module. So it is server. So how do I know that it is server? You can go to uh, uh, here, this line. It creates the HTTP server here. So I know that the HTTP server is is stored, the reference is at the server variable. So I use the variable to create an instance of the socket IO library. And then and when there is a connection, a connection event will be checked. So you register an event listener to it. So I IO write IO dot on and the event name is connection. And then specify the callback function. Inside this callback function, I don't do anything but to print a line to the standard out so you know that you are doing the right things. New user connector. Okay. So we finished updating the server side. Uh, you can read the read the read the size yourself. I don't go through it. And the next step is to update the client side. So you modify the HTML file. You just download an HTML file to views and then in that stock HTML. So I update. So before at the end of the HTML file, you add a script tag and then load the socket IO library. The path is this one. I just copy it. And this line only loads the socket IO library to your page, but it does not it does not uh, establish a connection. So you need to create a a, a connection here. So you call the call the IO function. This function is included in this library. So you call this function and then store the reference. We will need this reference later. Now you can reload the server. So I go back to the terminal and reload and go to the browser. Oh, where is my browser? Uh, here. I reload and go back to the terminal. You can see one line here, new user connected. If you can see this line, then you are doing the right thing. You can even create more windows. Let's say I create three more windows, and they should have three more lines here. New user connected. 
And how can I know that my browser is really connecting the web socket? You can click, uh, you can open the develop, developer tool and then go to the network tab below. By default, it is showing all the, all the requests. But you can filter it by the by the type. You can click this one, click the WS tag, which means the web socket. If you can see one connection here, then you are doing the right thing. You can even see the data inside this web socket. Okay, so this is a simple task. And we can create one more event listener. Now go back to the server side script and then add a event listener on the shortcut. So I add us I update the, the I update the event listener first. Inside the connection uh, event listener, the callback function takes an argument. So I add back this argument first. By using this shortcut variable, you can access the shortcut of the connect of the connection. So on this socket, you can listen to the this connect event and do your thing here. Again, a uh, callback function. This time, I want to print another sentence. User disconnected and reload the server. <coughs> Refresh. Okay, when I refresh, I get this one and then I close it. Then you can see user disconnected. So you so the so on the server side you can you can know the status of each socket by handling the connection or disconnect events. Okay, so this is the end of lab 2. If you have any problem, please raise your hand and I will come to you.
Okay, let's move to the next lab. So in the last lab, we, we created a web socket connection by using the socket I.O. library. And now we are using the socket I.O. connection to do some real things. We are going to write a single chat room. So first, we update the client side. Oh, too large. Um, okay, so inside this script tag, after I set up the web uh, set up the socket I/O connection, now I'm going to read the value of of the form, the dialog box, which means this one. I'm going to handle the submit event of this form, this HTTP HTML form, and then read the value inside this message inside this test box. So I I use jQuery here. If you don't know jQuery, then you can keep using the document dot get element by ID. But you will find that jQuery is more uh, is easier to use. So I first get the reference of the DOM object of the test box. My test box is uh, is where is it? It's here. This is my test box, and the ID <coughs> is M. So I. First, get the reference of the DOM object. So by this line, I get the reference of the of the object. Then I also uh, get the reference of this uh, of this div. This is for displaying the messages inside this chat room. So I will need this reference for updating the UI. So I get the reference here, and the ID is messages. So this two line is just to get the uh, get the DOM object reference from the DOM tree. It does it does nothing to the socket I/O library. Next step is to handle the submit event of the of the dialog box. So I register a, a submit handler, submit event handler. Submit the event name is submit. And then I set up a event and event listener here. Inside this event listener, first I need to prevent the default option at default action because by default it will post a HTTP post request to the server, but I don't want this to happen. So I call event dot prevent dot prevent default. The next step is to use the socket IO uh, connection to send a chat event to the server. So the server knows that I'm sending a message to the chat room. So by using this socket reference, I use this reference, and then I call emit. It means means sending some data to the server. So I call emit, and then the event name is chat, and the data is the value inside this test box. So I read the value from this test box by using this function. And after that, I want to reset the value of the test box. So I set its value to empty string. Just like this. So that's all for the client side. Now we move to the server side. So go back to the www file, the script, the style script. Inside this, uh, inside the event listener of the connection event, you register an event listener to the chat event because I, in the client side, I emit. Oh, where's it? Oh. I emit a chat event when I receive a new message, so I. So on the server side, I need to handle the chat event. So I go to the server side and then socket dot on 
on chat event, uh, register and event listener, and it takes one argument, which is data. Data means the the message you send to the server. So I need to get the reference here. And first, I print out the value to test if everything is correct. So I print it. And now you can reload the server. Reload the server and then uh, reload. And then type your message here. And go back to the server side. You can see the message is printed out to the console here. So we are doing the right thing. Let's continue to to uh, for for the development of the chat room. So after the server received the message, it needs to broadcast this message to our, all other connections. Because uh, you now only have one direction from the client side to the server side. The client sends the message to the server and that's all. The other clients does not know that there is a new message. So the, so, so the server needs to send the message to other clients. In socket IO, this is very simple. You just call IO. IO this is IO is the global object of socket IO library of the, this module. This is the global object. If you call eio.emit, then this means broadcasting. So now I'm going to emit a chat event and the data is this one. The received data is broadcast to the other clients. So now I broadcast the message to all other clients. After this, I need to also update the client side. Because the client does not know what to do when it receives a, a chat event. So you need to set up an other event listener inside the client side. Uh, so in socket, you register a event listener, the chat event, and then a callback function, which takes one argument, the received data as the argument. When it receives a new message, you update the UI. So I access this, this one. This is this part. This is for displaying the received message. So I call messages dot append. This is to append a new DOM object to the DOM tree. So I use a. I use an unordered list here. <coughs> Just like this. Then I finish updating the UI. I just append it to the DOM chain. And we are now ready to reload the server. And then reload this page. Now I type. Then the UI is updated. Okay. If you have multiple instances, let's create one more, one more window for this chat room, and below both of them. Now I type uh, something here. Then this chat room, this page will automatically be updated because it also receives the uh, the chat events. And if I type message here then this chat room will also be updated. So I already finished a very simple chat room. If you include a chat room in your project, then you probably get the five masks from your project because you, you just use very simple, uh, you write very few lines of code and then you can get a working chat room. So this is the end of the third lab, and the next lab, the next lab is about uh, is to create multiple instances. 
because uh, in for lab three we only create a single single chat room, and it broadcasts anything to other other instances. If you want to have multiple chat room or multiple sections, then you need to do do you need to write more codes. Maybe uh, two or two or three more lines of codes in the server side, then you can get multiple chat room. Okay, now we go to the ne next lab. So the next lab is to is to support multiple chat room. So before I go to the go to the lab floor, I need to give you some information about namespaces and rooms in Socket IO. So these are the tools provided in Socket IO for for supporting multiple instances. So the first one is namespaces. Socket IO allows you to name say, namespace your sockets which essentially means assigning different endpoints or paths. So when you connect, when you establish a web socket, uh, a socket IO connection, you use different paths to specify different namespaces. So let's see a, a, an example first. So you can have a root namespace or have another namespace called my namespace. Then you can separate the connection into two different two different uh, groups. So when you do broadcasting, you can just broadcast to one namespace, but but not the other one. By using this uh, feature, then you can support multiple namespaces, which essentially means that you can have multiple instances of your application. So this is the first uh, feature that you can use in assignment tool.
So this is the code of defining custom name spaces. You just use io dot of of is to create a new namespace, and then you listen to the connection events and set up a event handler, and you can do broadcasting by calling emit. And on the client side, you if you want to change the default namespace to other namespace, then when you call io call the io function, then you specify the namespace as the first argument. So this is namespace in socket IO. But um, my implementation does not use custom namespaces for different sessions. There is a, a simpler method to define different instances. So I use rooms. Rooms is very easy to use. You use the same endpoints, but you can have different uh, room number. So to assign the sockets into different rooms, you call socket.join and then the room name. This may be your session ID or room ID or some other things. You can define what it means. And after you call this, then you can do broadcasting within this room only. So to broadcast or emit, you first call io.2 and then the room name and then call emit then the broadcast message will only be sent to all clients within the same room so in this example if you call a broadcast and then with the to a function call to this room to 4 and 4 zero room then the message will only be sent to these two clients but not these two because they are in different rooms and you can control how to emit the events. So this is a very useful feature in Socket.io for defining different sessions. And from the code, you can see that we only need two lines of code to have different rooms. So it is really simple. Um, so my left four is to define multiple chat rooms. First, we need to modify the routes because I want to include my room number in into the URL. So I change the route a bit. The root route will direct to a new room. So when a client go to this route, then a new room will be created for, for, for this client. And if the route includes the room ID, then it display the chat room with the corresponding ID. Okay, so we go to the server side script, uh, the the index route. Oh, not this one. Where is it? So okay, I will check and then index.js. I want to change this root route to to be a redirection. So first, I need to generate a new room ID. For simplicity, I just generate a random session number. A random ID. And this random ID is from 0 to 9999. Okay, I generate a random ID here. And then I redirect the clients. I redirect the client to to this route, a route with the room ID. Then I need to remove this line because this is not relevant. So I change my root route. And the second step is to define a new route when the room number is specified. So I put a get and then the room ID here. My room ID is a number, so I specify the string pattern here and then a callback function inside this callback function I do the same thing as before I send the HTML file to the client and that's all for the route updates now if you go to 
if you reload the server and then browse this browse again then you can see that the URL now includes a random room ID and this is the requirements of assignment 2 so you can just copy the code here for the session ID but you need to uh, generate a unique ID instead of a random ID because uh, it is possible that the random ID is duplicated with previous session okay um, and then I need to update the socket IO connection now go to the www script Go to the client side first, because the client side determines how to how to uh, join a new room. So in the client side, first you need to um, get the room ID from your script and then tell the server that I'm in which room. So I need to pass the URL here. This script is to pass the URL. Okay. This few lines is to read the current URL and then get the last pass, which uh, which is the room number. This one, I get the room ID, and then I need to tell that I need to tell the server what which room I which room this socket is belongs to. So when I Establish a web uh, socket IO connection. I need to send my room number to the server. So I add a new event called register with the room ID. Then the server knows that the socket belongs to which room. Now we can go to the server side. We go to the server side and then we add a new variable storing the room ID and listen to a listen to the event called uh, register with a callback function. And when I receive the register event. I store the room ID to this variable and call socket.join by doing this I assign this socket to this room specified by this variable and the last line you need to modify is this line this is for broadcasting the received message. Now I want to broadcast to only this room. So I need to add to and then ID dot image. Then I change my broadcasting target. Now I only broadcast within the same room, within the clients of the same room. And oh, that's all. By adding this uh, these lines you can have multiple chat rooms now so this is very simple in socket IO you don't need to spend much time on it you just need to add a new event called register and then assign the event by calling socket.join then you can support multiple instances now I reload the server and then go to the browser reload and Let's create a new window and send, send a message. No problem. If I have another section, I have another section. My session number is 1059. And then I send a message 
than this client because it is in a different room so it does not receive the message that means that I separate the clients into different rooms now so you can see that it is uh, uh, simple in socket IO you can have multiple instances very, very easily and I think uh, this is very useful for your project because your project may want to support multiple instances and by adding these few lines uh, I think three or four I just add three or four lines to the code then you can have multiple instances of your project of your game so in assignment 2 you can use socket IO for multiple uh, functions first you can use socket IO for connecting the clients to the server and then you use the socket IO connection to broadcast the control control message uh, control signals to the desktop clients and you can also use the connection for synchronizing the playlist and this is for your reference this is the emitted events in my implementation so I have a register event, a download event, a command event for the control signal and add or remove you don't need to follow my protocol, you can design your own this is only for your reference ok we have uh, about 5 minutes left, we can go to the next lab the next one is to deploy your chat room application to Heroku because Heroku is our main uh, is our grading platform so you need to deploy it in, on Heroku first you need to install the Heroku 2 belt you can use you, you can install it on Windows or Mac or Linux they all support it and then log in and create a new app okay so let's go through the steps together first Heroku Grace uh, let me put the window here Heroku Grace and then the app name now my app is uh, Hello World Chat this is my app name Uh, remember to create a git repository at this folder first so to create a git repository you call git init and then you put all you put all the files to the git repository by calling git add and dot and then git commit and type your commit message here my commit message is first commit and after you created the git repository then you can create your app now okay then because this command will set up the remote repository for you so you just need to call git push Heroku Heroku is the remote remote repository name and then master then your application will be deployed on Heroku server you will see that it read your package.json file and then install all the dependencies you need to use and after this process is completed then your app is deployed in this URL so now I can go to this URL to see if everything is correct okay you can see my application is is on Heroku now very simple and let's test that if it can support multiple it can send message within the same chat, chat room no problem
So you don't need to do a uh, lot of configuration for deploying on Heroku. You just you just need to use the Heroku two belt to set up the remote deposit repository for you, and then you type git push. Then Heroku will do everything for you. So what do Heroku server does for you? Actually, it reads your package.json to find the startup script. The startup script is this line. npm. Um, actually, no, uh, the Heroku server is calling the, no, uh, the npm start command for you. So this line should be correct, otherwise your app will not be executed. And another thing you need to notice is that uh, the port number, you can't use a uh, hard code port number. In, on Heroku, you need to use a specified port number. You can read the port number in this variable, process.env.ports. You must use you must use the value inside this variable for creating your web server. Otherwise, your app will not be will cannot be accessed. And then git push, git commit. And if you want to include a database in your application, you can go to the dashboard. Go to the dashboard here. Ah. This is the app I just created. I go to the dashboard and then add-ons. Let's say I want to have a MongoDB. And I click find on five more add-ons. There are many of them you can use. Let, let use this one. M let MongoDB. And click this button, log into install. Then install. And then select which application you want to use. Now I want to use it on the chat room. So I select my chat room and then click submit. Then it will return to the dashboard and ask you for the plan name. Now I just use the free plan, click provision. Then it's done. So how can I access the MongoDB? You go to settings, config variables, and then click review config variables. This is the credential of connecting to your MongoDB instance. And inside your app, inside your app, you can read these configuration variables like this. Mock app. Oh, I have a typo here. Process.env.mongolab.uri. This one. It follows this one. By using this variable. Value. You can access the MongoDB instance, and for the rest of the slides, you just you can just read it yourself. I don't go through it with you, and I just have a reminder for you. Each free Dino Dino means your your running instance on the, on the Heroku server. Each free Dinos must sleep six hours in a four, twenty four hour period. That means that your app can only be executed for 18 hours per day. So if you want to do the developments on the Evoku server, you must sleep every six every uh, you must sleep like six hours in a 24 hour period. So if you want to work overnight, you can't use Evoku. You need to work on your local computer and when you think your app is ready, you can deploy it to Heroku to test. Sorry about that. Because we are we only get the free plan. Okay, so that's all for today's tutorial. If you have any problems, you can leave a question in the Facebook group or or ask me here.